Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys had a great Christmas and looking forward to an awesome new year. Sorry, my allergies are kind of acting up. We've had some weird warm weather and high winds that have just jacked everything up. I wanted to accomplish a couple of things with this video. One, sort of a channel update and a full reveal of our next project we'll be working on and maybe even in conjunction with the F100. I'm sorry that the ads are running. Honestly, they'll run them whether I want to or not uh, being monetized on the channel. So hopefully they could potentially generate some revenue that'll only benefit you guys with the money we put back in the projects. Kind of excited to show you guys this Bronco. It belongs to a customer, a friend of ours, and he's had it for like 20 years, but I can tell the tag's not been renewed in, I don't know, at least 12 or 15 years. So it's not been on the road in quite a while. But this is a 79 Bronco, and this is the XLT Ranger, which was sort of top of the line. If you see one that was custom, it's kind of funny, Custom basically was base model for Ford, the F-150 and the, and the Bronco. This is a second gen, which is considered, in my opinion, the most rare, and mark my words, will become the most valuable. They only built these for two years. It was their first time that they mimicked the F-150. The first gen Broncos were kind of a platform all in themselves. And while they ran the first gen for like 11 years, they only made like two, two and a quarter, 225,000 or so. But they only made like 180,000 of these. And I really just feel like this is going to be the go-to Bronco. Number one, it's a little more rare. Number two, it's a full size and it's comfortable. No matter which Bronco you got, it came standard with a V8, whether it was a 351 or a 400 in these two years. And they either they offered either full-time or part-time four-wheel drive, which we'll get into that with the transfer case. So easy to tell. All 79s have square headlights. 78 could have round headlights if it was the custom or base model. And then the XLTs had square headlights in 78. This particular Bronco has had a lift kit installed on it. As you can see here, it's kind of old school. I think some of the newer ones will not drop this rear beam down. It'll leave it at an angle and then have angle correctment parts towards the front. Uh, the dual shock setup, believe it or not, that was um, an option on these Broncos, which was pretty dope if you think about it because none of the new trucks even have that. They all had the Dana 44 in the front and the nine inch in the rear on leaf springs. Underneath this Bronco, it has the NP or new process 205 transfer case. The quickest way to tell, it's cast iron instead of aluminum. You'll notice this one's got disc brakes in the rear, which has been changed by the owner and we'll probably replace those uh, rotors and uh, maybe calipers, but for sure the pads. Same thing on the front. These are 37 inch super swampers, which kind of takes me back. That used to be the deal uh, back in the day. So we're gonna have to find some rollers to put on this guy so we can move it around and get the body off. Speaking of the body, let's take a look inside. They came with like three different seat options. This one has the high back buckets, which they made like lower back um, and bench seat style. So this is really uh, the seats to have. Not sure about factory door panels. Anyway, a headliner is not in terrible shape. They also offered, I think, sliding windows on the side, which was cool. And one of the really neat features is the rear gate glass lowers down, which they had put that in one of their, our Ford had that in one of their big giant wagons. So they carried that over, which is pretty cool, which is what the key does if you put it in the rear gate is lower that glass. If you're inside one of these and you see too high on the uh, transfer case shifter, it's also a dead giveaway that it's an NP205 because the 203s were always in four wheel drive. And this one is the four speed manual, which I think they offered two four speed manuals and one three-speed auto, which was the C6 for auto trans. No overdrive. One thing you're probably gonna not see is us redoing that interior. I'm certainly not gonna do the rust repair on this because you guys know how bad I hate to.
Now this one's equipped with the 351 V8. Like we said earlier, it was either a 351 or the 351M, which is up to a 400, I think 351 modified. I'm sure the Ford guys are throwing a fit right now. It doesn't matter, because this is going to end up with a coyote engine in it. That's right, we're actually going to do a coyote swap. We may end up waiting months for one of those turnkey kits. That way we can just swap everything over into this chassis. Makes it much simpler for the install, and I would think more dependable for the owner. This Bronco did come with the factory air conditioning, so the dryer and condenser and everything is already in the right place. But this big monstrosity of a compressor will certainly go away whenever we go do an our coyote swap. <laughs> You gotta eat your Wheaties before you open these hoods. So the first step on our Bronco will be finding some wheels and tires that we can roll it around on that aren't 37 inch super swampers. And then I'll build a cart that we can set the body on, separate it from the chassis so we can roll that in and start stripping it. We'll do basically what we did on our last couple of trucks. We'll sandblast the frame and the chassis components. Uh, we'll refresh with bearings and seals, whatever's required and paint and reassemble that stuff. Hopefully, if the coyote swap is locked in and ordered, by the time we have the chassis complete, that motor and trans will be ready to sit in there and we'll adapt it to that NP205 transfer case. Now for our 64 F100, we're gonna get the bed put back on it. We may go ahead and get our doors just kind of serviced up as far as the window regulators and, and, and the internal components like the latches. I just really haven't been in a big hurry to start with carpet and the other things and go in the interior. And it's kind of getting old covering up the seats all the time. I we'll have to hop in there and do something and uncover them. So, makes sense. But installing our fuse panel and running our wiring harness is going to be the next major project. So we'll go ahead and put the stuff that goes to the tail lights since the bed's on and we can wire up those as well as our front end. We can stub everything out, but go ahead and wire to our column and probably integrate like the Holly control for the fans. We will probably wait to hang the front end on the truck until we have like our serpentine system complete by wearing water pump and uh, alternator and power steering pump assembly. One thing I noticed with our rack, when I started to do just kind of a visual alignment on this, both of the, I guess you call them tie rod ends, are bent. The steering rack came out of a salvage, so whatever that front end collision was, if it bent both of those, there's a chance that the seals are damaged as well. And the last thing we want is to have this thing ready to go down the street only to find out that our steering rack's just gonna blow fluid all over the ground. These aren't terribly expensive, remanufactured, even from a local parts store. And the good news is we have a core to exchange if need be. I would love to have the budget to install like the S550 Mustang uh, electronic steering rack because there's companies out there that make like the adapters that you need to put them into a Crown Vic cradle. Getting rid of all the fluid involved in power steering would be awesome, but that's another $1,200 roughly. And that would set us back from buying other parts that we need to get this truck completed. I really want to tell you guys how much I appreciate you watching these videos and subscribing. We reached a thousand subscribers this past week. And while that seems really small for the big YouTubers, I can't tell you how excited I am that this could actually turn into something. And I would love to make better content to provide for all of you that have just been so faithful watching. So please like and share and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll keep making this content. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys have a blessed 2022.